The biggest and the best in the Imperium. The Ogryn holds the line as the stalwart defenders of the Dark Tide Party. As the proverbial meat shield, you will absorb damage and then club things over the head with makeshift weapons consisting of bolts tacked onto a spare tank part. And in this video today, I want to showcase my Bloody Bruiser Ogryn build that focuses on gaining max bleeding stacks to enemies around you, ensuring you have a ton of damage reduction so that you can become the tank you were meant to be. If you've not yet seen my veteran sharpshooter video, the way I'm going to structure this is by going over the build and the feet selections first. You can find the picture of that build in the description so you don't even have to finish the video if you don't want to. Then I'll give you a nice leveling build for the Ogryn followed by some weapon choices for the end game build and I'll include or conclude the video by giving you my closing thoughts over some gameplay of the build. You can quickly navigate to each subject that interests you the most using the chapters in both the description and the timeline and if you end up enjoying the video please don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe. I cannot tell you how much that helps out any content creator you watch and i'll be covering a ton of dark tide content with a lot of build weapon and general gameplay guides all coming out in the next week or so i'll be streaming on twitch with the same username i have here on youtube as well as streaming on youtube find that in the description too and let's get started here on my bloody bruiser build for warhammer 40,000 dark tide moving right here into the build for ogren i've reshot this i already did this before prior to the actual beta but things have changed with the beta's launch. So some of the stuff you might be seeing at the end of this video might look differently because it's actually on an older build and an older build being like a week ago. So um, if you see anything that's kind of different, there's discrepancies, just ignore it. I'm using this old build right now, but like I said, this pay attention to the locations of where we're choosing these talents because this talent, for example, looks different in the build you'll be playing. So just as a heads up there. So. What we're going to do here is we've got the build all right here. You can find a screenshot of that below. I'm going to go ahead and shut off all these abilities. I'm going to go through the choices we've made here. Going through our iconics, we've got thick skin, 20% toughness damage reduction, and 20% health damage reduction. That's going to be the big thing we're going to be hinging off of. Then we have excessive force for melee stagger, which is nice. Not a huge fan of it, but whatever. Loyal Protector so that you do not get interrupted when reviving people. Your Aura increases heavy melee attack damage, which is always lovely. And your Activatable here, Bull Rush, is you charge forward, knocking enemies down, gaining attack speed, and movement speed for 5 seconds. All great things. So moving into our level 5 talent, this is going to depend upon, do you need more survivability, or do you want to replenish damage when you're because you're doing a lot of... Um, melee attacks my go-to pick is smash them good because this replenishes 20 percent toughness on single enemy heavy melee hit and if you're using the shield that we're going to talk about later it's just probably the best bet the problem here with ogren is that it the feats kind of suck to be totally honest uh, a lot of the feats really don't help you achieve your job any better than anything else does and the ogren feels very underwhelming in higher difficulties where you just suffer so much range damage and there's such a huge glaring target that it's hard to overcome. So this build will hopefully help to mitigate that by doing a lot of bleed and damage mitigation. But the other option here is Linchpin, which is 100% toughness replenishment. This toughness replenishment is going to, uh, it's that passive toughness that replenishes in between damage, right? And I think it's something like four seconds, three seconds of no damage, um, and then your toughness starts to replenish. This is really good because it goes for allies in coherency, so it keeps the whole team up a lot better. It turns Ogre into more of a support engine, but it's very, very good. So this depends upon you. Are you playing with a lot of randos? Then maybe go with this. If you Are you playing with a cohesive team? Then go with Lynchpin, probably. On to this next one to level 10, we have Blood and Thunder plus one bleed stack on heavy melee hit, which goes with this, so we're replenishing toughness, our individual toughness from that. Um, so they just synergize very well together, and it goes well with our next uh, traits ahead, or uh, feats ahead. Outside of that, we have Lead the Charge. When you activate Bull Rush, Allies and Coherency gain 25% movement speed. This is great and all, but I kind of like to go with Bull Fighter. Bull Rush cooldown, when you or an ally in Coherency kills an enemy elite. Um, alternatively, too, you can go with Towering Presence, which would give you 50% Coherency radius. I believe in the main build it's 100% Coherency radius. I'm not really sure. But Towering Presence, in any of its iteration, in either this, this build or the other one, works very well with Lynchpin, which increases Toughness Replenishment. So those two very well work well together. But this also... And it's a great way to kind of get a lot of heavy melee attack damage um, in conjunction with trying to reduce your bull rush cooldown with bullfighter. 
Now, the probably the most important thing on this build is Bloodthirsters right here. 10% damage resistance per bleeding enemy in melee range stacks five times. So that's 50% damage resistance mitigated when you've got Bloodthirst active. You just want it. Um, the hardest nails... I don't really like because I don't want any kind of feat that relies on my team being damaged or down to give me mitigation. And especially on higher difficulties, that's not going to be good. That's really not going to be a lot of fun. Into our level 25 feet, we're going for Raging Bull here. 5% damage next melee hit on melee, on melee hit for each enemy hit with the initial attack. So confusing wording, but... Basically trying to ramp up a lot of hits gets you a lot of damage and since you're already doing heavy melee hits with your smash from good to replenish your toughness and you already do more damage with heavy melee attack damage for intimidating presence, it's just a really great way to add and stack up that damage together. Then lastly at level 30 we've got Bull Gore plus two bleed stacks on enemies hit by Bull Rush. Um, again, you're just trying to get those bleed stacks up and at them so that you can get your damage mitigation here from Bloodthirst. Uh, this is that's going to give you a two bleed stack immediately, so you immediately gives you that 20% damage resistance buff from Bloodthirst. And then it's just going to be a matter of you plus one bleed stack on heavy melee hit, your way to victory. And giving you all sorts of goods. So this is the bloody bruiser for your Ogryn. Um, there's a lot of different ways that people are going to build Ogryn. But I think by and large, this is probably one of the better builds. Because you're relying on a lot of damage resistance. I just feel like the, the Ogryn doesn't have enough damage mitigation. And it's on you, the player, to try and figure out how to get that. Getting it from your shield, getting it from these iconics and stacking these feats should hopefully go a long way. Well, let's move into what a leveling build for the Ogryn might look like. So for leveling the Ogryn, I'm just going to go right away with Lynchpin. It's great to keep that toughness topped off, especially in the early portions of the game. It's a really good little little ditty there. And in the early difficulties, the Ogryn's actually quite strong. So you can go with Heavyweight if you want some damage, uh, melee damage increase and some damage reduction off of all the other Ogryn's in the game, all the enemy Ogryn's. Um, those are nice things to have. I kind of like this, Bombs Away, because hitting Carapace Armored Enemies with your big box of Hurt causes it to open releasing grenades around the target so that can also that can be very nice and even armored units sometimes have different like carapace and or flak armor so a lot of units actually have carapace direct ragers can have carapace armor um, you've got your crushers i think reapers have some carapace armor on them so a lot of things actually count as being carapace armored so take advantage of this throw it you'll get bombs away and you'll get a little extra damage for your level 15 perk towering presence is really good in conjunction with linchpin uh conversely though if you want to just kind of go with bullfighter and keep your bull rush on uh cooldown it's you're, you're more than that more than more than willing to or more than willing <laughs> i feel more than obliged to do so once i get level 20 I would go into Bloodthirst and push this into Blood and Thunder. That way, it just kind of gives me a lot of damage resistance here. And then I would pretty much just start to move into what that end game build would look like for Ogryn. I just feel like there's so many... Like, I'm never going to choose this. A level 25 perk, fully charged heavy melee attacks, have unlimited cleave. I don't care. Like, that's not that great. And because I'm not going to be fully charging most of my heavy attacks anyway. You're just on the run. You're running and gunning so much in this game on the higher difficulties that I feel like this is just a way to kind of hamstring the character. I'm not into it. Also, when an enemy damages you, gain 20% damage against enemies of the same type. Again, I just don't want enemies to damage me. I want to mitigate the amount of damage they can do. And what I'm thinking of either outright damage resistance to mitigate that or killing them is a way to mitigate that. Now, again, keep in mind this is still an old build, so some of these values might have changed. But overall, the ethos of this will remain the same on the current build of Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide. Let's show off some things how this build kind of works before talking about weapons and closing our video out. So to show off some of the aspects of the individual synergies of this build, we're just going to simply press F. <laughs> and that makes me run through. I've knocked over four things. It's given me four stacks of the bleeding stuff, and I'm good to go. So that is really how you really use this build, is getting those bleeding stacks through, just simply slamming into things, doing heavy damage to get those bleeding stacks too. So let's go over here to a big boy we can get some bleeding stacks on. And every time we do that heavy damage, we're getting those bleeding stacks. And this is every enemy in melee range. So you want to use this on multiple enemies like that to get those two bleeding stacks added on. As long as you're in melee range, they're gonna be good for you. So you just kinda of get multiple enemies, get them bleeding with your heavy attacks because of that one perk. And it gives you 
that really nice bonus there. So that's kind of how you use this. It's just pretty much heavy attacking your way to victory um, and using F to try and get people in melee range with those bleeding stacks from your ult. And they're, you're right there in the thick of it. They're going to be jumping onto you. And you can keep using your cleave damage from your heavy attack to maintain even more bleeds onto anything around you. That's really just kind of the name of the game here. It's not a it's not a very crazy uh, synergistic class in like the Psyker where you have to do a ton of things. It's press F and smash things with your, your hammer. It's, it's how it should be as an Ogryn. Let's go now into some weapon choices. Now, as far as weapon choices go, it's really down to the battle mall and the slab shield. It's just the way to go. You can go with uh, a cleaver or a club or any of the other weapons here, but you have to really rely on staying around corners, not staying in any kind of range combat at all. You are a huge target. So when you are in difficulties three, especially four, and I'm not even going to talk about five, you will soak up damage. So you need a way to mitigate that in the best ways with the battle mall and the slab shield. Also, it's got great crowd control because of its combo capabilities. It can also push things away. Its defensive stance just drops the slab shield onto the ground and allows you to just basically absorb a ton of damage. Into the secondary weapon for our range weapon, Choose whatever you want. You want to go with the heavy stubber? Go for it. You want to go with the kickback? I wouldn't recommend it. You want to do anything else? Up to you. My personal favorite, though, is the Mach 2 Ripper Gun. Take a look at these symbols right here. Take a look at this photograph. Every time I do it, it makes me laugh. Um, you have different firing modes for the different mocks. Uh, this is a Mach <laughs> 6, 5, and that's a 2. The 2 and the 5, yeah, share the same type of profile here. They've got different attributes, but I think they also do the same attributes just in different locations. Um, different ammo profiles. I like the Mach 2 because it has more ammo, and that's because of the, the stat roll here for ammo. So just kind of take it with a grain of salt here. Um, also increases your reserves. But what I like about this is that it's secondary fire is braced fully automatic. So if I do need to switch to the um, my Ripper gun, I'm chunking things through. Don't worry about cloud, uh, uh, horde clear, though. Your goal is not to be a ranged combatant. Your goal is to absorb damage. You can use the grenade gauntlets, which are a lot of fun, too. Very, very, very well recommended. But I would go with the ripper gun, the grenade gauntlets, or the ripper. Uh, I'm sorry, the heavy stubber. But like I said, your main goal here is using this mall, getting those those stacks up and absorbing damage. That is what you are going to do as the Ogryn. So with all those things in mind, you can see that the Ogryn is, has a very weird place. Like I said in the uh, beginning of the build portion, a lot of the feats feel lackluster or they don't feel like they synergize the way that they perhaps should. Now that might be a symptom of the build that I'm on, the game build, and that might change by the time that the actual game goes live. Please keep those things all in consideration. This is very much a build that was in development and that might have all changed even by the time that this video comes out. So keep those things in your brain. But I think that the Ogren is going to be a very interesting class. A lot of people want to play them and I think that they are far more fun than I gave them initial credit for jumping into the closed beta or into this little kind of uh, pre-phase. And on top of it, they're an absolute necessary class to absorb damage and keep the toughness of your bros kind of mitigated or at least topped off because you're absorbing it with your shield and your raw damage reduction capabilities. Stacking up all those bleeding stacks to everything around you by charging into the fray, hitting things with your cleave abilities is a really cool way to really maximize that damage reduction that the Ogren can use. I'm sure we'll be able to find some really cool kind of ranged builds with the Ogren that focus on using the stubbers and such like that, but for right now, now, this feels like what is going to be the meta for the Ogryn going forward because it just seems like so many of the other things are very lackluster, especially those 25 traits like the ones where it says heavy, uh, when you fully charge a heavy attack. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to expose myself for that long. No, sir. No, sir. Not going to happen here. So go ahead and let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. If you're struggling with Ogryn or any other class, again, have, have at it when it comes to questions. I'm here to help you out as best that I can. It's going to be a little bit of a struggle with a lot of the other classes. I do think, though, that it's worth noting that the Ogryn really has an easier time in the early game and a harder time in the late game, which is contrary to almost every single class in the game right now. They all struggle in those first 10, 5, 10, 15 levels until some of their feats unlock and they really get some good synergies going, whereas the Ogryn just simply kind of feels the same 
as far as his capabilities going into the latter difficulties. But in the latter difficulties, there's just so much more punishment that he really can't kind of come to the fore. So we'll see how things kind of change as more options unlock for the Ogren when it comes to weapons and availability, especially those perks are going to be so crucial to your Ogren as well as curios. So make sure you're getting any toughness increase or toughness damage reduction increase. Um, yeah, uh, toughness damage increase because those things are really going to keep you alive as an Ogren Skullbreaker. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.